Hello, I'm Glenn. I'm Lori's husband. Lori's not feeling real well tonight, so I'm going to do a quick video and uh, show off some of these Pampers Chef products and give you my take on them. Um, tonight, I'm just going to do something plain and simple. We're going to do hamburgers and french fries because who doesn't love hamburgers and french fries? I think, you know, I could live on burgers and fries and fried chicken. But uh, anyway, uh, I'm going to show you their burger press. It's pretty cool. It has two, you have this here if you want to make a small, like a slider type burger. Or you take this out and just flip this over to make a full size one. I've already done some. They turn out pretty well. I have my ground beef here in the third pound. Third pound, they're going to make third pound burgers. Um, I think Lori's mentioned before we get our ground beef from her sister and my brother-in-law who raised cattle. Uh, it's good lean Angus beef. If you uh, if you're buying your ground beef at a store, it's fine. But if you know someone that raises cattle, uh, get your beef from them if you can, or find a local butcher shop that uh, has beef that was raised locally. Support your local your local butchers and, and farmers. It's a really good quality meat. You have a lot less waste, a lot less uh, fat. They make great burgers. They don't. I'm not expecting a whole lot of shrinkage with these. I know it won't. So. It's gonna make a good sized burger. So anyway, here we go. Pop it in there and you can smash it as flat as you want. Some people like them really flat, other people like great big thick burgers. Myself, I like them about like that. But again, it's personal preference, whatever you like. So it's pretty simple. Just gonna make these burgers up. Uh, a lot of people like to pat them out by hand or use the bottom of a bowl or glass or something like that. But if you have this, it's pretty neat. Give it a try. We'll set this to the side for now. And I'm going to season these up. I'm going to use just, we have our uh, pepper chef, salt and pepper grinders. I'm going to use pepper these up. I love pepper. All right. And then, Pepper Chef has a, a whole line of spices, and they are, are really good. Uh, I'll show you some more here in a minute, but right now I'm just going to put this uh, coarse Himalayan sea salt on here. Beef needs salt, and a lot of it sometimes. So, put a little bit of that on there, and then on. Alright, so there's our burgers, ready to go. I'm going to set them, well, no, I'm going to show you. I mean, obviously, there's a million ways to cook burgers on a million different things. I'm going to, tonight, I'm going to use this Pamper Chef indoor outdoor electric grill. It's a, it's a good size. Um, everything comes out to clean. And we've used it inside a couple of times. And, and it works fine depending on what you're cooking. But uh, I, just, I just leave it out on the patio most of the time. And it does fine. Um, also, Cooking your your burgers or steaks or any kind of meat temperature is important. Um, with beef, anything over 150 degrees, you're good. Um, even pork and chicken don't have to be as cooked to as high a temperature as a lot of people think. Um, this is a Pampered Chef's uh, instant read thermometer. You have this probe here, digital readout, and you can also plug this other probe into it to like if you're cooking something on the grill a big uh, pork butt or something like that just plug it in but getting your temperature right is 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 important um i like burgers and steaks 
medium rare, so around 155 degrees or so is good. Okay, set these to the side. And now for the french fries. Here we have the uh, rapid prep mandolin, is what this is called. It's pretty cool. You have your thing here, and there's two settings here. And or two knobs here for different settings. You turn this one there for fries, and then turn it up to about eight, usually seven or eight. I like eight. Gives you a, a good size fry. This thing's pretty cool. Stick your bowl in there, and it'll do a pretty good size potato. So, you know, that's small one. This is a pretty good, pretty good size spud here. So, just drop this in there, hold it down with this. And it goes all the way down, it gets everything, saves your fingers, and makes a nice sized fry. There's nothing like a good homemade french fry. Uh, Lori and I both love french fries. So I think she could eat potato every meal and breakfast too. Anyway, so this is a pretty good sized potato here. It, it goes right in. Okay, so much for that. There we have good French fries. So, and put them in the bowl. There's more French fries. Put them in the bowl here. Set this thing off to the side. This is pretty cool. And we're also <clears throat> here's another Pampers Chef deal. It's a brush. I know, looks like a toothbrush, but it's not. If you look at it close, the uh, bristles are cut on a bevel on both sides. Let you get down in the in between the blades on a, 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 cho a food processor like that to get every last little thing out. So there we have that, and we're going to cook them, cook these fries in this paper chef. 12 inch, I think. Yeah, cast iron skillet. And uh, I mean, yeah, I know. Calories, fat, all that stuff. You know, who cares? You gotta have a good french fry now and then. A good fried french fry. But, if you'd rather, you can use your air fryer too. The Pepper Chef air fryer comes with this basket. I don't know, it looks like one of those baskets you see at a bingo hall. But you can just, Load it up with french fries, or a lot of different things for that matter. Stick them in there, just spins them around. Does a pretty good job. Done that before too. We use that with hot dogs, a lot of other things also. Works really well. Okay, so we have our fries ready to go also. Now, a lot of people, I mean there's a lot of hamburgers out there these days. They have just about everything but the kitchen sink out on top of them. And some of those are really good. I like them. I like a lot of them. But for me, I just like just a plain old cheeseburger. Just meat and cheese and a bun and a slice of onion. You have to have an onion on a burger. So I'm gonna cut this one up. I'm gonna use this Pampered Chef butcher knife. Now this is, Pampered Chef has different knives. This one, is a coated knife, has a, some sort of a plastic handle. It's stainless steel, I'm not exactly sure of the grade. It's probably 420 or 440 stainless, which is a very good grade of steel for a, for a knife. Um, has a very, very good edge. I think it's a 17 degree edge. And um, as long as you maintain it, this knife should last a long time and it's very sharp. There's a lot there's a lot more two knives than a lot of people think about sometimes. I never realized there was that much to them until I started getting into knives a couple of years ago. As far as the different grades of steel, the different design. Um, this one here, you know, this is your bolster. Keeps you from sliding your finger up onto there. This is pretty good. Um, and like I said maintaining them. 
of a, a knife blade is, is very important. Make sure you keep them clean, dry, and if you get a little nick or it starts to get dull, go ahead and sharpen it then. Just, and that way it only takes very little time and effort to keep it, to maintain a, a very sharp edge. Now, I don't have one yet, but Pampered Chef has a sharpener, and I know I have probably 30 different kinds of sharpeners, sh sharpening tools, whetstones, spiles, you name it. But they have a little tool, and I think it would be really handy for like this, uh, the manual food processor with these blades here. Obviously, it won't fit into any of my uh, sharpening tools or anything, and it would be pretty time consuming to try to sharpen this manually on a, with a whetstone. They have a little tool, and I haven't gotten a hold of it yet. It looks about this size that you just pull along the edge, and it should keep this nice and sharp. When I do get a hold of one, I'll let you know how it works, and you could use that on this also. Uh, Pamper Chef also has a whole other line of knives that are, uh, like I said, this one is stainless steel. The other knives are forged from a, I don't know the grade, it didn't say the grade, but it's a, a, a German high carbon steel and it's fully forged. It has a full length tang, which means the, the same material as the blade goes all the way to the end of the handle. And then you have scales or the handle pieces are on, on both sides. It has a really good bolster. I'm looking forward to getting a hold of them and I'll let you know how they work also. But for now, I'm gonna use this, uh, it's called a closing cut. So if you uh, have a habit of chopping your fingers with knives, like I do, give this a try. I have not used this yet. So, but I know this is, is a really sharp knife. I'm not one of these that can go chop, chop, chop like on TV. So we'll slice this in half. Then you stick this, evidently you just stick this in here, hold it down like that, and then make whatever size slices you want. That one's a little bit thick, but with a little practice, you get a nice straight, straight cut every time, and save your fingers. So there we have that. I'll Cut the rest of them up. You know how I showed you how it works. You get it. So anyway, we're just about ready to go. Like I said, meat, cheese, and onion, and spices. Now, oh, I forgot to show you. I put Himalayan salt on here, but also, so they have, a, these are, this is just a, a handful of the spices they have. I'm gonna use this one tonight on here. It's carnitas. I guess you could use it for just about anything, but uh, it just smells good, so I'm gonna give it a try. That's another thing I, I like about cooking, and, and most of my cooking is done on the grill. Uh, Lori is a great cook, much better than I am. She likes to do all the kitchen type cooking. I'm better at stuff like this, or I also like to, uh, to cook on the uh, pellet grill, uh, as far as pork butts, ribs, Pork steaks, I make a great pork steak. And I am also the world's best chicken wing cooker. So keep that in mind. Now I'm the only one that voted that it was unanimous. But uh, anyway, we'll try a little bit of that. Don't be afraid to try different things. A lot of people, or some people, have been cooking forever. They have their ways, their recipes, and they won't vary. Hesitant to try different spices or different stuff. Not me. I try it. A lot of times it turns out great. Sometimes not so great. You know. Don't do that again. Uh, I'm kind. We go to a restaurant. If there's something on the menu that I can't even pronounce or I've never heard of or seen before, odds are I'm going to order it just to see what it's like. I just like it. So, anyway, we have oh, some issues. Smoky Applewood. Smells great. I think this is going to go really well on uh, on pork. It's kind of a a mixture of like strawberries and Mike and Zach's something like that. It smells really good. Korean barbecue. This would be interesting. I think I want to try this on some chicken. I'll show you guys the rest one of my recipes for chicken that I like. 
I'll show you that one of these days. Smoky Barbecue just uh, has a really pleasant smell to it. And this, Southern or South Carolina style barbecue. If you like a good mustard based uh, type of barbecue sauce or cooking, I can't wait to try this. It smells fantastic. I'm going to use this on a pork butt and I'm going to find a good Carolina style sauce to go with it. And I think that's going to be good. So, like I said, most of my cooking is done on the grill, so I'm going to show you one more thing. Well, I have it here. This is Pamper Chef barbecue tool set. I know most guys are, most people already have one of these, but hey, check this out. I have not used this yet, but you have a big wooden spatula, heavy duty tongs. These are really good. And a barbecue brush. Everybody needs a good barbecue brush and then a metal scraper. These are all heavy, heavy duty, very well made. Looking forward to trying them. I'll let you know how they do. So, I think that's about it. I think we're ready. Oh, one more thing. I'm going to cook these on the grill outside. But if you're going to cook it on a, on a, uh, a flat grill, here's a burger press. Or, yeah, the flattener burger press. Lay that on there. Cook them just like they do at the diner. Turns out pretty good. I think that's it. Ready to cook. So we're going to eat good tonight and I hope you do too. Thanks for watching.